we'd see friends of ours would drive around. You'd see a guy with a screwdriver sticking out of the ignition. You know we stole the car. You know we stole the car. And he turned it, turned it, literally turned the ignition. Hi, I'm Larry Lawton, America's biggest jewel dealer. Join me as I walk you through my past robberies, how I planned them, executed them, and ultimately got caught. I'm going to show you how we did things in prison, like making a tattoo gun, making wine, making white lightning. It's going to be very educational. These are the untold stories. Hey everybody, Larry Lawton here for another great edition of Untold Stories. This one's going to be all about cars. I'll get into that in a minute here, but first make sure you check out our membership programs. All our links, you know, the stuff on Patreon, everything we're doing. Go check out Instagram for some great pictures as well. And now I'll get right into what I was talking about with Untold Stories. And it's all about cars. And what I mean by cars is, during this trip, obviously I'm in my RV. You all know what that is. And it's fun. You know, I love my RV. And, you know, my fascination with cars and I think on these trips and while I'm driving, I, you know, I have a good time to reflect about a lot of things. And all my life and all the, the stuff I th did through my life, and it all had a lot to do with cars. And what I mean by a uh, lot to do with cars, I'm not one of these guys who has to have the best car. I don't have to have the best of anything. That's just not my style. People do ask me all the time, hey, Larry, what's the one car you'd love if you had to have one car? What's your dream car? Mine's a Bugatti, obviously it's just a two million dollar car, and I'll never have one. But you know what? It's some. It's great to dream. And I'll tell you some funny stories because when I was going through some stuff, I was thinking all the things I did to cars, whether it's steal them, blow them up, shoot them, or burn them. And I'm gonna tell you every story right there. I got a few stories that you guys are gonna love. My first car. Uh, not my first car, but one of the things I did with one of my cars was back when I was in the service. This was back, wow, uh, in 1982 maybe, and I was in station on the Coast Guard Cutter Jarvis out in Hawaii. So I ended up buying a Volkswagen Beetle, like a, a little, uh, you know, not it's like a half a Beetle. It wasn't just a total Volkswagen Beetle, if you guys want to look up a Beetle, but it was like that half Beetle had like a... A, 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 like a longer had a back seat to it you know a beetle didn't have that back seat it was just a two-seater beetle but no this was it had like a back seat and, and uh it was like it was an old car it was in the 70s or whatever it was and i bought it from another guy who was on the ship the ship was stationed in hawaii so when you buy a car in hawaii you don't really want to pay to ship it over back to the states the coast guard did ship a car but it wasn't worth it. You couldn't even, uh, you know, drive it from here to there. We called them an island car. So what did I do? We used to party a lot back those days. And what I mean by party, we did weed and stuff, but we drank. We drank with the best of them. So what does Larry here decide to do? I cut the roof off my car with a blowtorch. A guy who worked in the DC department, which is damage control on a ship. He was a DC man, and we used to call him Sauce. Never forget. He had a, uh, a he, we called him Sauce because he can eat Tabasco sauce literally raw, put it. And they even had a contest on the ship like that. Who could eat the hottest stuff, the worst peppers? I mean, you see guys, imagine what their asses was like. I mean, think about that. I mean, oh my God, what comes in, you've got to go out. Well, we used to call him Sauce. And this guy saw us, he was a DC man, and we all used to drink together, all of us. And what do I do? I literally said, come on, hey, saw us. I, I was a BOSA mate second class on the ship. And what do I do? I said, come on, D uh, he was a, a, a DC two, so we were both the same rank. And I said, come on, saw us. I says, let's go cut the roof off my car with a blowtorch. We literally took a blowtorch and cut the roof off my car. Now that car was a party mobile. I mean, everybody in the, the ship we used to all go out to the be different beaches. And back then, we used to drink stupid, and again, don't do the stupid stuff that I did. We'd be drinking, and we would throw the empty beer cans, crush them, and throw them in the back of the car. We literally had the back seat where if somebody jumped in the back seat, they literally were sitting on all cans. Nobody cared, we were young kids, we were all in our young 20s. And all we did was party. 
that was like the first uh, foray into cars and this crazy stuff I did with cars. So let me keep going on with cars as I got worse. It was kind of funny because the second time I did something with a car, I uh, I had a Cadillac. I was a, a gangster. I was a pretty wild guy. So I'm going to visit my friend Jojo, and Jojo lived in Central Florida, and he owned a bowling center. So Jojo's to this day, he's in his 80s, and he's one of my best friends, and he's a great guy. And so Jojo, you know, I go to see him, but I go to the bar where he had, he owned a bowling center. And it had, I don't know, 30-something lanes, 40 lanes. It was a big center. He invented stuff with bowling. Anyway, we used to go to the bar. We used to drink like crazy. And so I go to his bar, and I'm getting drunk. But little do I know, when I pulled into his his uh, bar, I was half in the bag to begin with. Again, don't do any of this, man. Don't drink and drive. You're going to end up killing somebody. You're going to end up some really regretting it for the rest of your life. What we got away with years ago, it was amazing. But anyway, and like I said, I'll never forget this one because I ended up going up a, you know, the bumpers in, in a uh, in a parking lot, in a Walmart. Like, I'm in a Walmart parking lot, and they don't have those bumpers, you know, where you pull up and there's a concrete bumper. They don't have them here in this parking lot. But a lot of parking lots, they have those bumpers. So I had a Cadillac, and I drive the car up, and I, I go go over the bumper. So I go in, I don't know anything, I go in, I'm drinking, I don't even think about it, I always had a pistol on me, so anyway, I go in, and I get in the, in the thing, I'm starting to drink shots, I'm going with other people, so what do I do? I have to leave, I go leave, I get back into my car, and I can't get my car off the bumper, it's stuck, it's like teetling, teetering, I just couldn't get the car off the bumper. And I'm backing up, trying to get... I could not get the car off the bumper. So what does Larry do? Talk about stupid. Larry gets out of the car, pulls out a gun. I had a 357 Magnum. 357 Magnum. Boom, 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 boom. I shoot three or four or five shots right into the hood of the car. Like, wh what good is that going to do? I put the gun back on me, and I go back to the bar. I told them my car stuck and didn't tell anybody and do it, you know, say that I shot the car, but they heard it. Everybody heard what was going on. But I'm sitting, I'm starting to drink. All of a sudden, I'm drinking at the bar. And all of a sudden, I look around and I see cops coming from every angle. And they all got their pistols drawn. And I'm like, what's going on? And they're pointing their pistols at me. I'm like, what I do? What I do? I literally get thrown up against the wall, put in handcuffs taken to the jail and uh here's the thing i'll never forget you know my dad comes and bails me out and you know to the credit my dad never said to me what did you do you're an idiot you know he knew that i knew i was an idiot he didn't have to tell me that you know what my dad did my dad to this you know he's passed away but my dad was my best friend what he did was he started asking me trivia questions sports trivia questions a lot of young people don't have that today because they can just look it up on their phone so it was really you didn't need to know trivia but anyway he would start asking me sports trivia questions and it was kind of funny because here is my dad you know uh bails me out what he didn't say what did you do anything i had to go down in uh, it, this was in where i live now it was in melbourne florida and here i am uh, getting out of the jail about three or four in the morning. And my mom came with him, so it was kind of funny. And they never said anything. But here's the funny part of that story. When I went and got my car the next day, I had to get to an impound lot where they took my car. I got bailed out of jail. I had to have a lawyer come up and help me out with this case. But anyway, what happened? They never checked the trunk of that car. I could have had a dead body in the trunk of that car. Obviously, I didn't. But, you know, you'd think that, you know, what's this guy from New York and, you know, he is shooting up a car in our parking lot in Melbourne. It's city limit. The place was called the city limits. And it was right on the border of Melbourne and Palm Bay. That's why they called it city limits. And it was funny because they never checked the trunk of the car. And I always thought that was ironic because why wouldn't you check the trunk of the car? And that actually gave me the point of, are oh, these really local cops pretty slick? Anyway, I ended up getting a lawyer to come up with me, help me get out of this problem, another problem I had to get into. But talk about stupid. That's another car. Why would somebody shoot a car? Just think of that. Why would you shoot your car? 
stupid. And as I say, things I'll never forget is how stupid I was when I was that age. So, the next thing I do, okay, another thing I did, which is pretty wild with cars, is I burned my own car. Here's the picture, right here. That's my burnt out car. So you got the picture. Uh, I did it for insurance money, and I did it because I wanted to get the money quick. I needed money. I wanted to get rid of the car. I couldn't get the price of the car by selling the car, so I'd get more money insurance, so I decided to burn it. Again, please don't do something stupid like I did. I look back and all the bad things I did in my life and the stuff I got away with, you know, I paid for it. I paid for it dearly with my life. But it is what it is. It is who I am. And, you know, I came to grips with all that. But anyway, here, what do I do? I had a Nissan Maxima. Actually, it was my wife's car. And I ended up getting her a Buick Riviera after that. A maroon Buick Riviera that she loved. But anyway, here I am. So what am I going to do with this car? Now, being a smart guy, and I am a, a pretty smart criminal, I always was, is I know that if you rob a car and they don't find the car, you're not going to get your money. It could be 30, 60, 90 days before they claim that car missing for good. So, because if they find your car, let's say kids take your car for a joyride and they find it two weeks later. They just give you your car back and they fix the damage that in. That's what your insurance company does. Well, I didn't want that. I wanted them to find the car, make the car totaled, and since the car is totaled, they're going to give you the full value of the car. Now, there's a couple of things you can do, obviously, and that, to not be called suspicious of the car. Here's one of them. First of all, if you take all the radios out and everything perfect, and want to get your car back because we did that once too my buddy ronnie burned uh we didn't burn it we just took the parts off his car and he ends up getting caught that's the funny story with ronnie because we ended up owing the money to a bookie and he ends up we knew a guy in the shop chop shop he takes the car takes all the parts out we put the car with crappy wheels we take it out and we uh put it on the street they find the car but little did we know that they busted the chop shop before we claimed the car gone. So they knew, because the parts were marked, they knew that this car, uh, they had the part numbers. So when they asked, was this car still running? And they go, oh, yeah, we were at the club, and we dropped, you know, we got out of the club, and the car was gone. They already had the car. They already found the parts and everything in the car. So they knew they were lying. Ronnie ends up getting an insurance fraud case. <laughs> case. He had a 19, I think it was a 78 Eldorado Barrett. It's a white car with maroon interior. Never forget that car. The long, long uh, uh, front of those Cadillacs. But anyway, in my case, when I take my car, I say, okay, I got to take the car. I got to put it in a spot that's, you, they're going to find the car, but they're not going to suspect I did it. Obviously, a Nissan Maximum back in those days was a car that was stolen a lot. So, you know, that I knew they wouldn't be suspicious about that. But you also don't take certain things out of it yourself. You know, you could leave things that they don't want. Is it, is it If it's kids taking it for a joyride and then torching the car, they're not going to take things out. If the car is going to be stripped, it's not going to be left in a spot usually that's found that quickly. Uh, unless it's along the side of a, a highway in New York or something like that. But this is in Florida, number one. This is in Central Florida. This is up in... Nor uh, no, this is in South Florida. This is in North Lauderdale. So what do I do? I own, I own a warehouse in a whole lot off of McNabb Road that had a bunch of warehouses and uh, chop shops, or, or not chop shops, auto mechanic uh, shops. People ran construction companies and carpentries out of these warehouses. My warehouse, of course, I converted it into a bookmaking joint and a clubhouse for the mob is what I did. Of course, I have to go to the extremes and put the air conditioning in there and, and offices and a bar. And I had a limousine at the time, so I used to keep that in there. It was crazy, so, you know, those lives. So, but I got to get rid of this car. So what do I do with the car? I got to get rid of the car, so what do I do? I bring the car around the back. And how you torture a car, as everybody knows, it's not, you know, I'm not giving anybody special information. You douse gasoline all over the car, 
inside the car, out along the car, and then you take a rag and you stuff the rag down into the gas can, uh, gas tank. You know, you take the cap off and you stuff the, the rag down into the gas, uh, gas tank. Then you light that rag on fire, goes down into the tank, boom, a big thing goes up and it, it doesn't blow. The gas just blow, but it, it's not going to go out, and the, the car is destroyed. As you can see, the picture right there. car was totally destroyed. And, of course, what the good part about it is that they find the car. And then once they find the car, they claim that the car is, is uh, you know, not usable. Obviously, it's totaled, they call it. They give you the full insurance money, and then you can go buy another car or you're not. Uh, I'm not saying these things again. All of the stuff that I ever did in my life, yeah, you know, what do you say? Regret? I always say you don't regret. You are who you are. Of course, I don't believe in doing stuff like that today. I think it's wrong. Looking back on my life, listen to me. You all know who I am. You know what I'm about today. So I'm not going to get into that part of the redemption part. But there is a lot of redemption. You all know that. So the next car I did, so that's my, my one car I had, and my wife, my ex-wife, to this day, will remind me, you know, you burned my car, you know? But she liked the new, the new Riviera she got. She got a Buick Riviera, so she liked that even better. So she can't complain too much, let's put it that way. So then the next one, I said, okay, here I'm on cars, so let me keep going. How we used to steal cars. You know, there's a lot of different ways back in my time that we used to steal cars. We had a guy, Jimmy, who could steal a car quicker than you can run to your car with a key and open it and leave. We used to bet people at a bar. We'd bet them. We'd say, listen, you got your keys in your pocket? And they'd go, yeah, I'll bet you $100 in 30 seconds he could take your car out of here. Yeah, what do you, get out of here, no way. And we'd literally time it. We'd say, go. They had a device that you actually spin and it goes into the 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 way you put the key in you know the i don't even know what they call that that's the you know where you the ignition the ignition thing where your key is you go in there you bang it you spin it and you literally pull it or you, or you go like this there was a the thing it grabs around it pulls it and you can pull out the ignition just pull out the ignition in those days when you pull out the ignition the steering wheel didn't lock they end up changing those things where they'd they'd lock the ignition but that was one way we used to do it. And you can, obviously, you can open the, the car door, the locked door. Back those days, also, they, they, you know, the, the first of all, they had a, a little knob that came up on top of the corning. So you could pull a thing, you could use a hanger, push it right through the top, boom. But we have what they call a jimmy stick. So a jimmy stick is your, you, it's a flat stick that goes along the glass of the, of the driver's side or the passenger window. And you literally catch the wire, you pull it up, car opens. Literally, psh, boom, that was it. Literally, that's how quick you open the car. So you can open the car door, in there, boom. We got so good at that, we could take a heavy, heavy screwdriver, know exactly where to put it with a big, heavy hammer. Wham! You wham that hammer into that thing, you break through the, the ignition, and, and you just turn it you can leave it in it's funny you know we see friends of ours would drive around you'd see a guy with a screwdriver sticking out of the ignition you know we stole the car you know we stole the car and he turned it turned it literally turned the ignition funny as hell but that's how you did you know we did those things as well so that was one way you steal a car i mean here's another way the best way to steal the cars was when you keep everything intact and that was the way we used to do it the best we would wait for a person to go in to get the newspaper. He would go into a, a store, he would get his car, he'd pull up to a, in New York City, they would pull up to a, a, a like a, a, you know, we used to go in five and dine stand, newsstands, but they, or bagel shops. The guy would pull up and go in to get some bagels. He'd leave his car running right out in front of the place. He knows he's going to be out in two minutes. Well, we'd be waiting there for him, waiting for somebody to do this. We'd watch him literally go in. While he's walking in, we're literally heading to the car, jumping in the passenger, uh, the driver's seat, and getting off. And we got the keys. We got everything. A lot of times, the guys don't even pay attention because I know guys who used to sometimes wait. They'd have two guys. We'd have what they call a guy would wait. And if he saw somebody else chase the car, he would hit him with his car. 
like an accident. And we call him a crash vehicle. So that guy takes off. The other guy is just waiting there. If he sees somebody see that happen and a guy wants to go chase him to be a, a hero, he would have a car accident with that guy. Because he'd be like waiting over here. The guy would be waiting over here. You just rob the car. Boom, you take off. Now, this guy who's in this car is your partner. He's waiting to see if anybody's looking or if anybody is going to jump in a car and chase him. Or uh, maybe somebody over there, maybe the guy wor went to work and him and his buddy were going to work. And he said, I'll stop and get bagels, wait with me. And the guy's waiting. If that happened, this guy pulls up. This guy just hits him like, oh, I made a mistake. Oh, what are you doing, buddy? You hit me. And, and he gets him good enough that the guy can't go after the car. I mean, that has happened where somebody, oh, I'm chasing somebody. What do you mean you hit me, motherfucker? And the whole works that happened like that. But that's what they call a crash car. And he's just protecting you as the driver. Most of the times, people just don't even know. They don't even pay attention. They go in, they go get their bagel, they go get their newspaper. Whatever they do, they come out and their car is gone. They don't know what what way it headed. They have no idea what happened. And that happened all the time, too. So it was crazy there, too. Another time, what we, what we used to do is, obviously, you know, I blew up a car. And how do you blow up a car? You know, the, the situation happened because a guy owed money. And when you owe money, you you, you shouldn't uh, you shouldn't owe money. Let's put it that way. And he owed money. And how do you send a message? Well, his car you could blow up a, t a a tank of gas by the fumes in the tank. Depending on how much gas is in the tank, will blow. And you could do that a number of ways. People uh, know it on the internet and everything else. And so we would do that, but we'd make sure nobody's around. We never wanted to get anybody hurt. I got to say that. In everything I did, I never wanted to see people get hurt. Uh, I, I, I don't know if that's just a great quality in myself or not. If you were in my business, you didn't want to run across me. But listen to me. If you were a civilian, if you were a, a, a person that wasn't involved in crime in any way or something, nobody wanted to hurt you. Nobody wanted to you know, make, listen, that sounds weird, and it's trying to sound like an excuse, and there is no excuse, everybody, uh, I have no excuse for everything I did, you all know that, so, I want to close on this video, telling you just a little bit about cars, because, you know, I was thinking about this trip while I'm on with, with my RV and cars, and now I'm obviously always, always watching about, uh, when I see cars along the side of a road, where they would be, in New York, they'd be on blocks and gone, and hours anyway everybody stay safe keep watching and keep staying uh, listen to your public officials listening to people around you about the coronavirus everybody well, you know time is helping and it's moving on I hope you are safe keep watching you all know I'm on GTA now check me out on GTA I'm gonna be getting good at this uh, Xbox stuff so I'm coming for everybody Lest is going down anyway we're gonna have a whole series on that thanks for watching everybody Stay safe. Check out the links below. Check out our Instagram, Facebook, all the stuff we're doing. Still got some books left. About 250, something like that, 260. Uh, so check that out as well. Thanks again, everybody. A lot of respect. Thanks for your support. It really means a lot. It's all about cars. Have a great day.